It was the day before Thanksgiving, six years ago today, that the Mariners franchise changed forever. The Mariners were gearing up for their 2017 season. The likes of Nelson Cruz, Robinson Cano, Kyle Seeger, Felix Hernandez, they were all already in Seattle. But the Mariners needed to add some more if they wanted to make the playoffs. And as everybody else had started to already unthaw their turkeys for dinner the next day, or ham, if you prefer ham, Jerry Depoto was working feverishly to make an incredible trade happen for the Mariners, which eventually came to fruition, and it looked like this. The Mariners sent Cattell Marte and Taiwan Walker to the Arizona Diamondbacks in exchange for Zach Curtis, Mitch Hanniger, and Gene Segura. On the surface, this trade looked like the Mariners were trading for Gene Segura to get him to play shortstop for Seattle. But in the end, this trade ended up being so much more, and the Mariners would not be anywhere near where they are today without this one trade. So it seems fitting on the six-year anniversary of the trade that changed the history of the Mariners to talk about it today and see where it stands as of right now. Obviously, the Mariners broke their playoff curse in 2022, and Mitch Hanniger was on the team for that. Of course, Gene Segura was not. But let's look at the players that went both ways in this trade, starting with the Arizona Diamondbacks. In 2019, this trade looked like it was going to be really lopsided in the direction of the Diamondbacks as Cattell Marte put up a career year. He was an all-star in 2019, hitting 329, 389, 592 with an OPS plus of 149. He hit 32 home runs that year, which is absolutely insane. But since then, Cattell Marte has not been the same player. In 2022 alone, he hit 240, 321, 407 with a 106 OPS plus, hitting 12 home runs with 52 RBI. And I think the best way to analyze which trade was more valuable is to compare the wins above replacement that all the players have added together in this trade. Zach Curtis, we're not going to talk about him because he put up a 0.0 wins above replacement for the Mariners. He only pitched in three games. But for Cattell Marte, as you can see here, he's put up a 17.0 war since he got traded to the Arizona Diamondbacks six years ago today. That is a hefty, hefty margin for the Mariners to try to make up here. And it's only going to get worse when we look at Taiwan Walker's numbers. Trading Taiwan Walker was scary. He was one of the biggest prospects for the Mariners for such a long time, and it felt so weird to see him finally in another uniform after the Mariners gave him four or five years to finally make it work. Alas, Ty went to Arizona and played there for three years before becoming a free agent. And in his three years with Arizona, Taiwan Walker put up a 2.9 war. We're just going to round it up to a 20.0 war that the Arizona Diamondbacks received in this trade. It's technically 19.9, but I'm bad at math, so we're just going to make it an even 20. And the Mariners also kind of won out on this trade because the year after he became a free agent, Tyler Walker signed again with the Seattle Mariners, who then they traded at the deadline to the Toronto Blue Jays. A 20 war is nothing to scoff at, but the Mariners won out on this trade with the players they received. We all know how important that Mitch Hanniger has been to the Seattle Mariners, and it's hard to believe that he may not be a Mariner next year because he has been a stalwart for the Mariners over the past five seasons. He helped end the drought. He wrote that incredible article in the Players' Tribune last year, and it's just hard to believe that the Mariners put all this work into having Mitch Hanniger as a cornerstone of their roster. They said they want to build around him, and it worked. The Mariners built around Mitch Hanniger, and it was crazy in 2018 just how good of a player he looked. I remember talks of trading Mitch Hanniger after 2018 when the Mariners started to sell off all their players, including Robinson Cano and even Gene Segura. But no, the Mariners were keeping Mitch around, and I think it really paid off. Overall, in Seattle, Mitch put up a 15.5 war, wins above replacement with the team. Already, the Mariners have very much caught up to the Diamondbacks in this trade. Now they're only four and a half wins above replacement from where the Diamondbacks are finished. And then, of course, we move to Gene Gene the Hit Machine. Gene was really good with the Mariners, and it was such a shame to see the way that that relationship ended because he had really enjoyed being with the Mariners and playing with Robbie Cano to begin with. He ended up only playing in Seattle for two years, even though they had signed him to a five-year extension, and Gene put up in those two years a 7.4 war. So automatically, the Mariners take away this trade. They are now at like a 22.9 war. We'll call it a 23 war that they got out of this trade. But believe it or not, this actually isn't finished. And I'll explain why in just a second. Again, while Gene Segura's time with the Mariners didn't end the way we had hoped, they then chipped him off to Philadelphia, 
where they received J.P. Crawford back in the trade. And if Mitch Haniger doesn't re-sign with the Mariners, J.P. is the only one on the team still connected to that trade, and in his time with the Mariners, he's put up a 9.7 war. So because they traded Gene Segura for J.P. Crawford, I feel like his war should still be countered in this trade, putting the Mariners over 30 plus wins above replacement that they got from this trade specifically. And with J.P. Crawford now being a big part of the roster moving forward and the starting shortstop for basically as long as we can imagine right now, I think that the Mariners far and away changed the course of their franchise with this trade. And of course, there's still some story to be told because if the Mariners re-signed Mitch Haniger, and I mean... That being said, Gene Segura is a free agent this year. I doubt he would ever come back to the Mariners after what happened. But I think that if Mitch Haniger comes back with J.P. Crawford as well, the Mariners and this trade, without this trade, the Mariners would not have made the playoffs last year. More than likely, without this trade, the Mariners would have been in such a darker place. They would not have had Mitch Haniger for all those years. They wouldn't have had Gene Segura for all those years. Sure, they would have had Taiwan Walker, but even throughout that time, they re-signed him anyway. Cattell Marte would be nice to have right now to fill in at second base, but even then he had a really bad year last year. The eve of Thanksgiving is a big day in Mariners history, and it just so happens it falls on the same day as it did today. So what else could be happening over the next few days for the Seattle Mariners that could make Thanksgiving even more of a magical time? Well, they could be making a trade for a second baseman, and I have that video on the screen now. I appreciate you guys watching this one, and go Mariners!